and go through ways to make money. We've done this one maybe once a year for the past couple of years. Some things have changed. Like to start off the bat, I don't know that I would tell you to go to start driving Uber or Lyft right now with the price of gas. So there's definitely some deal or some jobs that you may not want to lean towards in today's market, but there are still a lot of great ways that you can make some side money. Now, before we even go side money, let me just say, this is a really great market to potentially look for a new job, look for a job, you know, I don't know where you are, but if you're in a job and you don't feel like you are making the average salary that you should be, uh, there are shortages everywhere and you can make some pretty great money uh, just by looking for a different job. So that's not normally one of the tips here, but because there are so many shortages, really I feel like it should be off the top that you start you know, at least exploring what is out there compared to what you're currently making. Uh, I know that it's not in everyone's best interest to go and get a new job and you may love where you're working, but the potential is there to make actually some significantly more money than you are changing jobs because of the market uh, and there being a shortage of employees. So just to start with that one, uh, I would recommend hopping on some of the big you know, recruiter sites, the big job posting sites. I'm not saying you have to like throw your resume out there. I'm not trying to get you fired from your current job, but it never hurts to go hunting. So just to start with that one, we'll move to some side gigs, um, but I just wanna mention that from the get-go. Um, and hello to everyone that's jumping on now. It's good to see you guys join us. Um, every week for most of you, um, both of my Wendy's so far and Nadine and Yvette, always glad to have you guys join me. So as I go through, if you have a really great side gig that you are doing that is working for you, feel free to shout that out. Now I know I just mentioned Uber and Lyft may not be the ways to go, but there are probably some folks that are still making some decent money with that despite the price of gas. So I'm not trying to, you know, like, speak ill of any of these companies, just wanting to, you know, and some of you may chime in and say, I'm still making a, a, a ton of money there. That's great too. But I would love to hear some ways that you are reaching out and trying to earn some side money. And I don't mean like a dollar here and a dollar there. I mean a significant side income. Uh, to me, if I'm going to put some effort into a side gig, I want it to equal some kind of bill. So for example, we are do a homeschool co-op and I can sub for one of the other moms that's there. My husband, uh, you know, he would never jump in on this one, but for me, I get paid 50 bucks to be your sub that morning. I'm okay with that. I already have to be there anyway. And 50 bucks right now, that's a tank of gas. So that's how I look at it. I want whatever your side gig is to equal something that you would need to purchase. And a side gig that's gonna like buy you a Coke, that is not a side gig. So we are looking for something that is at least gonna pay some bill and you know, a little tiny sub for three hours of the morning. That's a pretty good uh, rate for me for somewhere I already have to be. I will gladly sub for you uh, if you ever need me. So uh, not that anyone uh, is around for my homeschool co-op, but that's just what we do one day a week. So some other ways um, to jump in that obviously, let's let's start kind of off of my co-op one, um, but I did wanna mention teaching online. So a year ago, two years ago, the biggest way to teach online was in uh, for students in China. You cannot do that anymore. China has closed those borders to online teachers um, from America teaching kids in China, but there are still so many options to use your teaching skills uh, to teach kids online. Uh, my kids are homeschooled. I have juniors, I have an eighth grader. They take online classes throughout the week. My juniors in high school, I don't really teach them any of their subjects. Um, they have online teachers that teach them AP statistics and dual enrollment this and, and whatnot. But there are people who have stepped in to teach those positions. So. 
Now, those are definitely higher level positions that take masters, but there's a lot of online coursework that you could teach just with a teaching degree. Some of them don't even require a teaching degree. So just going to throw that out there, really Googling just online schools, online courses. You're going to find so many places to look. And, and I will mention, there are a lot of them that almost function like Etsy. So you're just putting yourself out there. You're just going to make a course. A lot of these teachers run it over Zoom uh, and the parents send you PayPal money. This is literally the kids uh, or my kiddos class for AP statistics. Uh, we found this through a forum. The teacher is in California. Uh, we've never met this teacher. She's uh, pretty intense. They've got a lot of homework. I have no doubt they're going to cream the AP statistics test but we literally paypal her money and classes on zoom so we don't need a lot of technology here so just to start with that one online coursework online teaching is still really big just not looking at china you're looking at the united states think about the things that you you already know things that you feel like you could teach and jump in and make a course for it uh, you know i am thinking someday in retirement i could totally teach all of my nursing brain um, that I've like turned off for the last 10 years, it's still there. So I'm just gonna run like anatomy and physiology, online classes, biology, I, I could teach it all. Um, so you could probably figure out some things that you specialize in too. Really and truly, I probably need to teach like high school financial ed. Um, that's probably at this point where my, my expertise would be better uh, handled. And maybe I should jump into a high school financial ed class. But I would encourage you to think about the same thing. What kind of expertise do you have? What could you jump in and teach an online class for? So uh, lots of options there. Just some quick Googling to find yourself ways that you want to put it out there. A lot of folks just advertise on homeschool Facebook groups. Um, you can you can figure out ways to market yourself. Not to mention, you do have some national companies doing this too. So you've got K through 12, that's an online. You've got each um, state has their own as well. So Connections Academy is a big one here in South Carolina. Teachers from all over the US that are working with those companies. So that's number one. Um, and to move from there, because I know not everybody wants to get in front of a, t a camera and teach something, um, let's talk about uh, like actually selling things. So I just saw Wendy chime in and say that she made $220 last week selling three items on Facebook Marketplace. And so far, she's up to over $4,000 since you began selling. So Wendy, I have a question for you. Um, since I can't type in the comments, I would love to know, are you selling things that you have around the house or are you finding things specifically to sell? Um, because that's really two markets that are out there, but in terms of selling online, I encourage you to think about both. So first to think about what do I have that I don't need that is around the house? And second, what do I see that people are wanting that I think I could find and resell? So um, maybe you know you have a hobby of going to estate auctions or finding some interesting things at a pretty cheap discounted price to where then you can sell them and make money on them or selling things around the house. I mean, I think you could go both ways here, guys. I have no doubt we all have things around the house that we could put our fingers on and we could sell. So I wanted to talk about that, specifically going with things you have around the house first. Um, but if you have specific questions on finding things to sell, we can try to go there too. Um, that is not a market that my husband and I like intentionally go out and find things to buy just to turn around and sell them online. But I think, uh, you know, the, uh, the advice kind of holds for the same. And Wendy answering my question says, um, she's just selling things from the house, things that need to go. So, and that's pretty huge. So just a comment on that again, to repeat Wendy's first um, comment that she left, literally selling things that she has around the house and you've made over $4,700. That's huge. That should be motivation for all of us to clean out of our, uh, Everybody has closet clean out duty this weekend. Um, so thank you, Wendy, for that motivation uh, to get in there and dig and find things that we have. And these don't have to be big, huge purchases, guys. These could be smaller things that you think, you know, I don't need this anymore, but somebody else might. And you could make 
a chunk of money on it or a little tiny bit of money on it, it's still all adding up into that bucket for you. Uh, David and Katie just chimed in and said that they go to thrift stores to flip items and sell them on eBay, which is great. So let's talk about ways to do that and to know kind of the price point that you're looking for. These are just basic tips, guys. You can probably find detailed YouTube videos of eBay, eBay sellers kind of walking you through all their tips. Uh, I would recommend if you're gonna do the David and Katie way of walking through thrift stores that you maybe kind of niche yourself for a little bit. You learn what is selling. Don't just walk into Goodwill and just start randomly buying everything. Uh, actually look at what the options are. Maybe do some research and figure out what departments are gonna sell better. Do we wanna stick in branded clothing? Uh, you know, obviously if Goodwill has a thousand glasses, probably not glassware that you're gonna wanna sell online, unless it's some amazing glassware. Okay, so let's talk about just some quick, easy tips here to know what is selling. Um, so the easiest, easiest way, and I've pulled up something in particular because this is actually something that we need to sell. Um, we did a deal and it came with a free pair of Samsung Galaxy uh, Buds and we need to turn around and sell them. So they are Samsung Galaxy Buds Pro. Um, and you'll notice there's a lot of listings here. Obviously, if you have a brand new box, that's gonna be something that needs to be factored in over one that maybe says open box, which is this guy right here. Um, so you can look at the current listings and that's great, but what you really wanna look at is you wanna scroll all the way down to the sidebar right here. And you wanna see this show only box and I wanna show only sold and completed items. And now, looking at only sold and completed items, I can get an idea of how much things are selling for. So some of these are really low, but they say parts only, they were broken. Um, some of these are much higher and they were brand new in box. I can see when they sold too. So there's a lot that I can get here. I'm just gonna zoom in so you can see everything. Uh, this is a new listing. I see that it's a brand new item. The box is there. It was a buy it now, which sometimes the buy it nows actually go for a little less than if you had put an auction behind it. Uh, free shipping, which is always an enticement for every single one of us when we do a deal. But what I want to encourage you to also look at is the date that it sold. So you see a whole bunch that literally sold today. This is telling you something. This is telling you that this is actually something people are interested in. This is something that people are coming to eBay to try to find cheaper than Best Buy, Amazon, Samsung directly. So I see a lot that have sold today or maybe just go this week. Uh, obviously this is you know a technology item. It's gonna have um, more frequent sales. But if you pull this up and you look at sold only and you see that maybe two have sold in the last like month and a half, that's telling you possibly that what you have is rare, but I doubt it. It's telling you that probably there aren't a lot of people searching for this. There aren't a lot of people that want to buy it. Um, so just you know, be hesitant before you go and list it and, and pay to list it in that sense, getting it up there if we're, if we're not gonna turn around and sell it in the end. Um, or maybe it's a chance for you to think about your price. So if I see that two have sold, it's not something people want a lot, maybe I just go lower on the price so that I can get rid of it would also be a really great tip. So again, I've zoomed in here, but the biggest thing that we clicked on here, all the way down on your sidebar, there's not anything past this on the sidebar other than ads, it's clicking on sold items on the filter. So. I am looking only at sold items. I'm not even looking at local, though you could do that on eBay. You may not realize that that's available on eBay. Um, I just wanna look at what's sold so that I can get an idea of what is selling and current prices for that item or possibly even that item and the condition of the item that I have. Is it new? Is it used? You know, All those factors um, going into the price that you're gonna pick. So that's gonna help you do a little bit of market research before you just start throwing your items up there. You can do something similar on Facebook Marketplace as well. So uh, what you're wanting to sell, really you wanna think about the audience you're trying to reach. Facebook Marketplace, typically you're reaching people who live in your area, sometimes a little further out. So um, I think a lot of folks may be willing to make it a day trip depending on what the item was that you're buying. We sold a little trailer 
um, either earlier this year or late last year, it was a few months ago at this point. Um, and the gentleman that came and bought it, I'm pretty sure was in Charlotte. So for us, that's an hour and a half drive that he came down to get it. He obviously knew that he wanted it at that point if he's gonna make that journey, um, which is nice. You know that you're gonna sell it, but keep in mind for Facebook Marketplace, most items, it's gonna be people who feel like it's not that far out of their way to come and pick up whatever it is that you are selling. Um, and with that in mind, you need to consider too, uh, you know, making sure they understand that it isn't theirs until they come and get it. So don't go promising something to somebody who says, I'm gonna come, and then turns out they don't come, and they're gonna come in, in a couple more days, and it just keeps getting extended. And you may have really missed out on some people that would have actually purchased it. So people need to have that mindset when they're shopping on Facebook Marketplace, that if it's something they want, that they need to find the time to get there and to purchase it. Uh, obviously, if you know someone is on the way, you don't go and sell it from, out from underneath them if they're driving an hour towards you. Um, but if they've told you they were going to come and they didn't come, uh, I don't know that I would jump out and offer to hold it for them for another day. So just a little tip on that one. Um, so there's a ton that you could sell. That's always a question that folks ask is, you know, what around the house would be great to sell? That's again where I would I would say sit on Facebook Marketplace and just search, just see what people are selling. Sit on eBay and see what people have sold. Do both of those. Uh, eBay feels a little harder because you're thinking, I'm gonna have to box this and I'm gonna have to ship it. eBay actually makes that really, really simple for you now. Um, you can literally click a button and print a shipping label. So really, really simple there. Don't feel overwhelmed by that side. Um, they'll even help you figure out the shipping side of that as well. If you're brand new to eBay, um, let me just show you where I would recommend you start. At the very top is a button that says sell. And if you're brand new, it will have a like hold your hand how to set up your first listing, how to think about your title, uh, you know, how to take your pictures. They really try hard to onboard you. That's what that would be called um, in the best manner because they want you to be successful. If you obviously sell the first thing you list, then all you're going to do is turn around and start scouring your house for other things to sell. So uh, in terms of trying to decide what could you sell, it could be some name brand items that you have. Maybe you've got some clothing that's name brand for girls. Maybe you got some purses or some shoes that are name brand. So you can definitely go clothing, but it could also be home decor. So I'm actually going to turn here just a little bit. You see the little uh, church that's right. Let's see. How do I do that? Right up there on the top of our China cabinet. Uh, I could sell that online and potentially it actually would do pretty well. I haven't researched it kind of, you know, on the fly thinking about it. That little guy is made by Southern Living at Home, a company that hasn't existed in almost 10 years now. Uh, so to, you know, if, if it was something that somebody wanted or a brand that somebody wanted, you could potentially do really well. Let's say you had a set of dishes that have been discontinued. You have four left. You've broken a number of them. If they're a, a name brand set of dishes, if they're a Southern Living at Home, whatever, it's just a specific brand and it doesn't exist anymore, but you had four decent plates, you could totally sell them. Um, so just, you know, mentioning that one and the Southern Living at Home, the seeing the church little behind me is actually what made me think of that because I had a mixing bowl from Southern Living at Home that I absolutely loved and my children broke it the company doesn't exist anymore. And to turn around and buy that again to replace that mixing bowl, they are incredibly priced. Uh, and it's a, you know what? I don't know that I loved that mixing bowl quite that much. It was a great mixing bowl and it's broken, uh, but I am not gonna pay that money for it. But a lot of people are, obviously. So just one example of probably so many things that you may have sitting around the house and you're thinking, you know what? I'm kind of tired of whatever that is that's been sitting up there. This could be a great time to get rid of it if you wanted to get rid of it. Okay, so to jump into some questions, um, Diana has a question on mystery shopping or secret shopping. We are gonna go there next. Um, and Javon says, does eBay charge any fee for selling? They do charge fees for selling, Yvonne, and they will list that out when you click sell. Um, a lot of times it's a percentage of the item that sells. Um, sometimes it's a flat rate. It really depends on what you are selling and the value of what you are selling. So I can't like say it's 
always a certain amount, um, but they do charge a fee. And that is really the case for anything. So let's say you decide to go set up an Etsy site, um, which is also super easy to go set up your own Etsy site. Even Etsy is gonna charge a percentage of that um, for you to be your own Etsy seller. Uh, they're gonna take a chunk because they're it's processing, it's advertising. They have all these reasons as to why they're gonna take their chunk, but everyone's gonna do that. Um, so that is just what eBay is doing as well. Now, Facebook Marketplace, does not do that unless they pay through Facebook Marketplace, um, then you're potentially gonna deal with fees on the payment. And the fee is either gonna be taken out of your cut or they're, you're gonna ask them to pay that fee uh, when they send you money through PayPal or however they're paying you, but you could potentially still have a, a fee put in there as well, even through Facebook Marketplace, depending on the payment structure that you have for that. Okay, um, how do you decide how much the price should be if you're including free shipping and you don't know where the person lives? That's a really great question, Lynn. I would say the best guess is to always go with the farthest zone for the United States. So you can pull up the USPS, you can pull up UPS, <laughs> those are uh, way too similar in names, and you can get a shipping cost estimator from both of those, kind of estimate the size of the package, the weight of the package, and then you in your estimator, one of the options is I don't know the address um, or just Google a zip code in California for me in South Carolina to get that farthest option for a U.S. zone. I would recommend that whatever you sell, you sell U.S. only. Um, you can sell internationally. And in that situation, if someone does, then uh, depending on where you're selling through, you may need to say there will be an additional surcharge for international shipping. Um, but most of the things that you sell, you're going to sell in the U.S. So going with that farthest zone from you, that's what the post office system calls it, is going to help you get kind of that worst case scenario for you to factor into your price. And maybe it works out great for you. Maybe the person ends up being 30 minutes away and you decide you're not going to ship it. You're just going to drop it off at their house. Um, you could do that too. So uh, this wasn't in regards to selling something, but this was actually one of the Christmas uh, giveaways that we did over Christmas. But somebody in town uh, won a air fryer from us that was literally like it was massive. So I may have done a small little dance when I realized that they just lived on the other side of town and I was not going to have to pay 40 bucks to ship this air fryer to them. I will gladly run it and leave it on your porch versus having to pay to ship that across town. So, um, you know, however you want to go, but that farthest zone is your safest bet for factoring in enough of a buffer. Um, oh, and Susan says, Facebook Marketplace is very difficult to find items. The search seems to bring up odd things or I have to click on each item to get the details, locations. Um, and, you know, Susan, I will say I'm not avid on Facebook Marketplace. If I was looking for something, I'm probably going to go eBay first. I guess it just depends on what you're hunting for. If it's something larger, this is where I actually turn to my husband and he becomes the little Facebook Marketplace guru. So maybe he can chime in and give you some tips on how he would find things in the comments. Um, I will gladly sell things there uh, whenever we need to, but I don't tend to go hunting there. And Maybe it also helps me to spend less money if you're not looking, right? You don't you don't buy. Okay, um, so to oh, and Deborah is saying a few folks are mentioning it too. Um, Mercari, if you sell more than six hundred dollars in a year, they will automatically generate a ten ninety nine. So that's going to be the case with any seller now, um, or it's going to come as a ten ninety nine through PayPal. So. If I sell through eBay, all of those transactions go through PayPal. Um, you're going to end up with a 1099 from PayPal as well for the money that has gone through their system. So if Mercari is handling those payments, not PayPal, they are going to send you that 1099 as well. And that's required. Um, it's not them being annoying. It is uh, anybody that has earned more than $600, you have to send them a 1099. And that's actually existed for a long time. Um, so... You know, just so you kind of don't blame them for it. Oh, and Carrie, I just saw your your comment. Yes, I did. My birthday was a couple weeks ago, and that is what I asked for for my birthday was um, to 
feel a little uh, a little lighter. Okay, um, let me make sure I didn't miss any other questions. Um, let's switch then. So we've kind of hit selling online. There's so much there, but this is just to get you thinking. You know, dig through your closets. Think about even some decor items that you're not, you know, not loving. You've had forever. They don't. They're not sentimental to you. Let's see if somebody else is interested in them. See if you can sell them is a great way to do it. Um, and there are other places. So Evelyn's mentioning Poshmark as well. So if you've got those name brand clothing, you could also do Poshmark, Facebook Marketplace, eBay, Poshmark. Those are three of the biggest. Um, Mercari is also out there. So lots of different options for selling. Uh, we tend to stick with just Facebook Marketplace and eBay, and we're happy with those too. Um, Oh, and Diana, does this happen with sites like Ibotta if you earn more than $600? Uh, yes, it does, Diana. If you earn more than $600 through Ibotta, they will send you a 1099 as well, uh, any of the sites. Now, some of it also depends on the earnings with Ibotta. So if you are earning this back on purchases that you've made, uh, no. If you went crazy and you had a lot of referrals, yes. Uh, so one is literally that they are paying you to refer a friend. The other is you've already bought the item and it's like a rebate. It's like a coupon basically that you used and no. So it's a little bit of a yes, no answer on Ibotta, but you can end up with a 1099 from mobile app companies. Uh, you can end up with a 1099 even from the mobile apps that are running the, the mystery shopping and the shop kicks and whatnot if you earned that much on those as well. Okay, um, so let's go um, into mystery shopping a little bit. Uh, and I pulled an old post for you guys. I'm gonna have my husband share it in the comments for you. Uh, and I actually have this on my list to update for next month. I was kind of mapping out ahead of time uh, all the things that I wanted to update. But um, I did look at this when we talked about this last time and all of the links um, are uh, were still good. So. Um, in terms of this one, and we're gonna stick it in the comments, but it's just the gist of mystery shopping. Uh, the biggest point here as you get started is you never, ever, ever, ever pay to join a mystery shopping company. No, do not do it. As you go Googling, you will find some companies that say, hey, um, pay to join, and then we will give you our uh, list of companies to work with. No, these lists exist. You don't need to pay to join them. Um, but there are some great uh, companies to work with. So Bestmark is one of those. Pinnacle Financial is the other. These are literally my top two. Um, with those, I get emails regularly from both of those companies. And I haven't actually done a mystery shop in now probably a couple years still get emails from them saying, you know, do you have time to go and do this one? Now, they're not like, hey, Jenny, they're just blanket emails to everyone on their mailing list. I'm just saying the mailing lists are still coming. Uh, a lot of these mystery shops are things that you already want. So for a really long time, we had a Chevy Suburban and they needed mystery shops at Chevy dealerships for oil changes. Yeah, I will go get my oil change. You'll pay me back for the oil change and you'll pay me to do the write up. So glad to make a mystery shop oil change because then it's free. Uh, you'll find a lot as well. The Pinnacle Financial that I mentioned that is on that link, it's the top one on the link, um, is a lot of banking ones. So they're gonna want you to go and begin the process of setting up a checking account or a savings account. Uh, and those actually pay really well. They take a little bit more time because they want you to go into the bank to do that. Um, but then they want you to do the write-up. So a lot of those pay upwards of 150 for a bank mystery shop. You will find some that are mystery shops for restaurants and for grocery stores, but some of that with COVID has really tapered off. So a lot of them are more service-oriented mystery shops like the oil changes and the banks. Um, sometimes it's for local doctor's offices, for well visits. You'll never know what you'll find in there. Uh, but there are some great mystery shop options that are there um, and with mystery shops. So just, you know, keep in mind, I'm not going to pay to join uh, and then kind of hunt around. Sometimes joining a few of these companies mailing lists is going to help you to get more offers coming to your inbox. So you feel like you're making some decent money with that. Uh, this isn't a I'm going to pay the mortgage 
but it can be a significant little side gig that is maybe going to pay the grocery bill that week from various shops that you did. Um, there are a couple of apps that also do this. Moby is one of the more common apps right now because um, we see we kind of see some mobile apps come and go. Um, Moby app has been around for a while though and does have mystery shop um, like adventures basically that are in the app. Um, so you can find different, I was gonna try to find it. Um, I don't always keep things on my phone if I'm not doing them. So um, I'll pull up their website. Maybe that'll be the easiest one to show you. So with Moby, um, it's kind of a, um, like, I, I feel like they tried to maybe blend um, shop kicks with mystery shopping a little bit. So some of them actually are really small. You're gonna drive around, you're gonna answer whether or not there's a flyer in the front window advertising something. So you're helping the corporate office know if somebody in this small location actually put it on. Oh, and they call them missions, not adventures. I knew they had a fun name for them, but um, you will go in, you will complete your missions, um, on your secret shopper apps, you kind of feel like it's, you know, a little, um, mission impossible there, uh, but you will find lots of things with this one. So Moby is a free app. Uh, you earn your rewards and then you can cash out when you've earned points for gift cards. Um, so that could be a fun way to just get your foot wet. Don't even need to go digging for companies, just trying a new app, um, and seeing what you can find in a new app seeing whether or not there are some fun missions around you um, could you know, at least give you something to do if you're out and about. So uh, that's a few options there to get you started on mystery shopping. Again, this one's not gonna you know, make you a ton of money, um, but the same with selling online. The amount that you're gonna make is based on the amount of time that you're gonna put in. How many things are you gonna list to sell? How many missions are you going to accept? You get the idea. Uh, but those are some great easy ways to make a little side bet. Um, so Karen's chiming in with some others. She um, oh, she said she did a, a Pinnacle Financial Bank mystery shop the last time that I brought it up um, and opened an account. She's also done Presto Shopper and iShop for Ipsos are two other mystery shopping apps. So Presto Shopper and iShop are two others along with Moby. So that gives you three apps that you can start with there. Uh, thanks for chiming in on that one, Karen. Um, so hopefully this gives, gives you guys some, um, you know, ideas of where to start there. And I'm actually going to stick Karen's, um, oh, maybe sometimes when I click, it goes up there. There we go. So if you want to see those typed out, you can at least get an idea of what I was trying to say. Sometimes those are hard to think about how to spell, but Presto Shopper and iShop for Ipsos are two other mystery shopping apps. So hopefully that will help you guys. Okay. Um, to keep moving, one that I've mentioned in the past still exists is a great way to help folks out as well. And that is testing online websites. Um, so everyone that makes a new website, sometimes they want to know whether or not people actually like them. Uh, you know, did you, um, find that that worked? So you will find a few different companies that will do this. You'll even find it on like Fiverr sometimes. Um, but this one in particular is uh, one that I would recommend. Let's see, sorry, I'm trying to find my buttons here. Uh, this is trymyui.com and this is where you've created it. Someone's created a new website and they need someone to figure out if you can figure out how to use their website or their app. You can get into their database and basically you're becoming uh, a test user. So they're building a test user database and then they'll come to you and say, okay, well, this particular person says that their app is designed for women between the ages of 25 and 40. And we would like for you to be a tester on this app and tell them, do you feel like this is marketing to you? Do you feel like this is working for you? Can you find what they're telling you to find? Uh, and you will get paid $10 for each test that you take. So that again, that website is trymyui.com. Um, and uh, a lot of these that I'm mentioning, guys, I don't, I think my husband's already put it in the comments for you, but um, there is a long list that we have put up on Southern Savers of 
um, 22 ways to make money online. And this is in this list. So if you just click on that um, 22 ways to earn extra money, you will see it. Uh, I do need to update this because I do need to take out um, our two Chinese teaching English companies here, though we did still hit that, does still apply, just not teaching English. Um, but you'll you'll find that try my UI there. There are other websites that do something similar. So Fiverr, which is five with two R's, Fiverr has a lot of really small little gigs, and some folks will even put on there that they're looking for testers or they're looking for basically like survey folks to help them out with something. The other play way that people use Fiverr is maybe you're a graphic designer or you're pretty good with code and someone will say, hey, I've got a little issue here. Can someone help me figure it out? And a lot of times it's cheaper to do that than to go and find a full developer um, to dig into your code and figure it out. Or maybe your own developer, our developer has done this with um, an Android app issue. He doesn't really make apps. He helped us make our database. Um, but you know, he kind of did it on the side because he was just being nice for us. But in the end, when it breaks, he's a little out of his league. So put it up on Fiverr or up on Upwork. Those are two great ones. And you can find somebody that will dig through, that will figure out the solution, but you are not going to have to pay them an arm and a leg to do that. But that can be a great solution for you if you have a little bit of talent in some coding languages that you can offer your services, but I can also offer to test through those sites too. So just, you know, throwing those out to you. Those are also in the list for short-term gigs. Um, so uh, to move on past those, uh, for my artsy folks, I mentioned Etsy. Seriously, guys, it is so easy to start your own site to sell things. Uh, I was at a birthday party this weekend and chatting with another mom uh, and you know, never would have known this about her, but she sells images on Etsy and has for years. Great. So I would actually point you to like iStock Photo or some of the other photo sites, but turns out you can sell even photos on Etsy. You know, just figuring out what you feel comfortable with, but it's super easy to set up a store and sell whatever it is that you make. Um, so for example, we uh, do classical conversations. That's our homeschool co-op. Uh, and in terms of classical conversations, there are so many amazing mamas who have come up and made all these just neat coloring sheets and things that can go along with what we're, what we're learning. Um, I absolutely love it. My kids can sit here and have something to help them learn their, um, extra stuff. And I didn't have to reinvent the wheel and you're getting to help out a mama at the same time. So you will find there are all sorts of things that you can sell online if you have um, you know, any sort of talent. So that's Etsy, but this could also be iStock Photo, um, a couple others for your teens. Uh, I mentioned this in the past too, like a great, maybe they just have funny t-shirt designs or funny uh, bumper stickers. You can go with Redbubble or Teespring. Those are two great online sites for those. Uh, just to you know, get them out and let them daydream up their ideas and sell them online as well. Along those notes, uh, if you've got a teen who loves to design, I will mention one great place to put them is to put them in Canva to do those designs. Um, I use Canva every day throughout the day, um, but Canva will have some really easy templates and things that they can build from, some things that are already there. They can kind of build those designs in a, in a neat interface. There are other programs too, uh, but Canva actually has kind of a, a free side to this for a little bit. So you don't have to pay unless they're you know wanting all of the features for a super long time. So I'll help you a little tiny bit. If, if you've got a kiddo or yourself and you're wanting to try to get into graphic design or try to get into t-shirt design or bumper stickers, you get the idea. Just some neat things to look for um, in terms of how to put those together. Canva is by far my favorite uh, graphic design, photo editing kind of place to do all of that um, in one place for. Oh, and Karen's got another... Um, 
one to chime in, so I'll stick this one up there too for folks. So again, in mystery shopping, if you're just starting out to take a look at field agent. Um, so some extra tips for mystery shopping from Karen. Okay. Uh, one that I wanted to mention because this is my sister-in-law, she has made a ton of money through Rover. So Rover is a dog walking service. This is not going to be big in every area, but she lives in the Atlanta area and in her dog walking, it really turns into pet sitting. Um, for Christmas, we begged her to come and visit and she's like, you know what? I'm going to lose so much money to come and visit you for Christmas because she can charge more to house sit for Christmas. Now she is single and I think in her early thirties, late twenties. So she can handle that. Obviously that doesn't work for all of us, but Rover can be a really great way that, you know, your late teens, your early twenties kids could make some significant money. She's actually done so well through Rover that she's taken herself off of Rover. So she's kind of turned off to new clients because she's just working with the clients she already had. Uh, that's just mind boggling to me. But when you think about how much folks do love to travel, and if you are in an upscale area, they're only gonna travel more. Uh, so if someone wants to pay you to come and sit with their cat for Christmas, okay, I guess you can do it. Uh, so may not work for all of us, but could work if you are single. I don't know, if she was married, she could probably take her husband too, uh, but you get the idea. So looking into rover.com, that's how she got started uh, with little gigs, just making and building rapport with those customers and then basically running it on her own. This is a side gig for her, but a side gig that is pretty lucrative. So um, no, it can build up to be as big as you want it to be. Uh, and basically in that sense, this is also kind of going off of uh, another website uh, that you could do the same similar thing with. So TaskRabbit is an example of this too. This is where I can post, you know, something little that I need to have done um, and I can find a handyman, I can find somebody who can help me with whatever that task is, but it can be the same thing for you as well. So you can actually post for yourself. Hey, I'm a handyman. I'm willing to come in and paint a room. I'm willing to come in and help you move. Uh, you know, whatever it might be, you'll find there's a ton of services that are there. TV mounting, furniture assembly. You know, if you live within a two hour radius of Ikea, I would pay you to come and put together my Ikea furniture. Uh, maybe you become the Ikea furniture expert uh, in your area, but you can see all the options that are there. This is a really great way to list yourself as a, uh, a tasker, or you can list your own tasks. So you can do both. I can either be the person that's gonna do the task, and that's over here in the corner, become a tasker, or I can post a task that I need to have done. So, you know, gives you an option. And I, um, you know, thinking of Ikea here is probably, this is what made it come to mind. But seriously, have you even tried to put together Ikea furniture? They always start with like two little people in the picture. So you never do it alone. Um, it'll, it's like marriage therapy as well. If you needed some, some significant things to work through, Ikea furniture can do it for you. Uh, but that's a really great way to kind of get yourself out there and build rapport. It doesn't mean that you have to live on these sites. You don't have to stay on Rover forever or stay on TaskRabbit. You're building rapport with clients and thereby, you know, in the end, they're going to come back to you and say, hey, I've got your number now. You know, I'm not going to go through Rover. Instead, I'm going to text you and say, are you free for Easter to come and babysit my iguana? Making that one up, but maybe iguanas need to be babysat too. Um, so, you know, just throwing it out as an option for you. Uh, well, Darcy, I, I don't go to Ikea very often, but I'll call you the next time I do. Um, I'm not really allowed to go to Ikea. It is not always so easy to just leave everything there. You want to buy it all. Um, okay. Uh, and Carl, yeah, outside of Atlanta, I mean, you can imagine the folks in, she's in downtown Atlanta, so you can imagine the folks that um, need some pet sitting in an upscale area. Um, a going kind of sticking on those lines as we talk about traveling, don't forget about your Airbnbs and your VRBOs, guys. So if you've got um, you know, an extra place that you want uh, to rent out, 
they will walk you through how to become a host. You can host anything, uh, anywhere. So I've mentioned to you that I have, um, you know, hopes and dreams of us going out west. I was looking at some Airbnbs, literally finding tents in people's yards that are available um, to rent. So the whole uh, you can uh, host anything, anywhere, they mean that. So if you want to get creative, maybe someone's willing to pay for that. Uh, there are, you will find campers, you will find yurts, you will find uh, that the world has been very creative, um, but there are a lot of unique and great places. So these do not have to be your whole house. I have a very sweet friend who lives up in Boone, North Carolina that has rented just a spare room, but still makes a chunk of money from that spare room. Um, so it's as comfortable as you want to be. Obviously, not all of us are like, hey, come on into strangers. Um, but if you're older, if it's just you and your husband, this could be, a, you know, you're basically going to run like a bed and breakfast. That's the point of Airbnb uh, is you kind of have that side going. You don't even have to offer breakfast, but you could be giving out a, a portion of your house to somebody that doesn't also have to be the entire year. So another example Let's say you kind of live somewhere boring, but something big happens there every year. Really great example would be Augusta, Georgia. Um, so having knowing a few folks that live in the area, the folks that live in Augusta, they leave when it's time for the Masters. They don't stay in Augusta. So if you're going to leave when the big, huge event comes to your town for one week, you might as well rent out your house while you're gone uh, because every hotel room is packed, uh, you might as well get some extra money on the side. So it doesn't mean that we all have to have a house in Gatlinburg uh, or at the beach. Your house could be very lucrative just at specific times of the year. So consider it that way too. If you're not in a vacation area, are there some times when everybody comes to town for Columbia, uh, we've gotten a few of the um, NCAA, like first round and second round games, but that has filled up all the hotel rooms in town as well. So, you know, could be a great opportunity for you to even look at your college sport games. Um, that could also be one where you don't want to go there, but just, you know, trying to get you to think outside the box a little bit on those. And they can be a significant, easy way to make some side money. Um Oh, interesting. So Deborah says she's seen several people post locally about being an Easter bunny for you, that they will come and hide the eggs for your kids. I think that that is, I, I mean, I love it when people are being creative entrepreneurs. Um, and if somebody wanted to wake up in the middle of the night and put eggs all over our yard, I probably wouldn't complain. We have some chickens that do it for us, but I don't think those would be quite as fun to go find as ones that are filled with candy. Um, I think, yeah, I think it's wonderful. Um, oh, and Wendy says a couple from their church pays uh, her husband and another person to sit their cats. They have two shifts, a morning and an evening shift to cat sit. So yeah, there are some crazy cat owners out there, um, but it's good, easy money. So I'm proud of your husband for he has a little morning job uh, to go take care of um, this cat. So, oh, and Darcy, that sounds like you would be doing a weekend at our house. She said, not sure about iguanas, but she did a weekend with five dogs, three cats, 12 chickens, and a rooster. So if you want to come out here, you're going to get three dogs, four cats, a tortoise, uh, a gerbil, and some chickens. So we are our own little pet menagerie. And if we go out of town, we have to have someone uh, that at least comes to feed them all. They don't need to come and live here, but they do need to come feed everybody. Um, though lately we kind of just go with somebody coming and staying. Um, okay, so lots of ideas there. Uh, Airbnb, uh, VRBO is also great. Both of those are different. You won't always see the same houses listed on both of them, so you could pick which one you want to list with. Uh, Airbnb tends to be more rooms and more smaller things versus entire houses. So if you're not looking at renting your entire house out, you're just looking at renting a room, I would recommend the Airbnb versus um, the VRBO if you're trying to decide. 
Uh, no, not 14 cats. Ooh, sorry, four cats. That's like 14, very similar. Uh, they're all outside too, by the way. None of them get to come in, um, but they're happy as a lark outside living on our porch railings all day long. Okay, um, a couple others that I've intentionally left to the end. So you can actually make some good money doing clinical trials. Those do exist and they do pay for most of them actually pretty well. So I would encourage you to go digging. You will find a number of databases that keep those running. Um, and keep in mind with clinical trials, usually when you're on one, they don't let you get on others. So if you find that you've got a lot of options for, um, if you are a unique uh, ethnicity, you are older or significantly younger, not taking like pedi uh, pediatrics here, but like 18, 19 year olds, you don't see a lot of those on willing to do trials and they're not really even thinking about it, but they're still needed for trials. Um, but if you've got unique factors about who you are, you're going to be more in demand. Uh, they don't really want middle-aged white women. We got a lot of those uh, hanging around. You get you get my drift. So um, wherever you are in that spectrum, just keep in mind that you could have a lot of options. Now, the reason I say that, there are still options for my middle-aged white woman self, but I don't want you to put yourself in a boat, take the first clinical trial that comes out and then um, find that you actually could have been eligible for some others because once you're on one, you won't be eligible for any more until that trial is over. They don't usually want you testing multiple options, multiple drugs. Now, obviously for some clinical trials, you have to have the disorder that is going to limit you. Um, but some of them are actually for things that are not disorders as well. So some of them are just like a new pain cream, uh, you know, something where, yeah, something hurts every day. Um, so they're not always a, you have diabetes, you have a rare disorder. There are things that you will qualify for. Along that lines, I'm talking clinical trials here, but you could switch this into the same being um, just home testers. There's some significant money that can be made in small home testing gigs as well for new products that come out, giving your feedback on those. So that one flows into surveys. Now, there's a ton of online survey companies. Most of them, you're gonna make, it's gonna be down to the, you paid for your Coke. Most of them are not a, I paid a bill. And that's where I started. So I want you to put your focus on things that are literally like, I made 50 bucks. I just bought a tank of gas. I just paid the electricity bill. You know, that your side gig here is gonna feel like it was actually worthwhile. I mean, it's great to pay for a Coke, but it's not really worthwhile. So online surveys, I do love them. They're great for when you're just sitting on the couch and you, you're, we're already so used to multitasking anyway. Uh, might as well do an online survey while you watch whatever you're gonna watch. Um, but I don't want you to put all your eggs in that basket. It isn't gonna pay anything drastic. It's just fun. I wasn't doing anything else kind of money. But home testing, which is like a side of that same kind of category, can pay. So some of those home testing gigs can pay upwards of 150 bucks, depending on the product and the amount of testing and review that they want you to give. So it is going to require a little bit of your time here, but it could be something that you also look into. Um, so again, just general Google searches is going to help you find a lot of those, but there are some great sites that just list upcoming home testing things for various companies. Uh, there are also survey panels that you can hop on. So these are not online surveys. A lot of them are done over Zoom lately. So hopping on su survey panels over just your typical online survey does pay more than a online survey will. So uh, lots of uh, lots of options there. Oh, and Deborah, um, you guys are asking about our cats. All of our cats are outside cats. They do not come inside. Um, and that they're happy as a lark out there. We do have four of them, which is a lot, but in our living out in the woods, they are always leaving us treats of things that they have saved from coming in the house. So I'm okay with that. Um, they earn their keep. Um, and Susan, I am not on Brand Club, um, but I, I could have been you. Someone, somebody recently asked me about that one in Facebook messages. Um, so it's on my list of apps to download and play with, um, but I have not tried that one out. 
Okay, so um, sticking a few other links in there for you guys um, as we go through or kind of finish up here, but I have a link for you that my husband just stuck in on like how to have a successful yard sale. This is a great time of the year to not only sell things on eBay and Facebook Marketplace, but selling things um, with just a general clean out the house yard sale. Uh, I would recommend on anything that you are contemplating putting more money on that item, let's look and see if it would be worth more. So a yard sale is not where I wanna sell high-end items. This is where I really want to go and uh, you know, sell everything I couldn't sell on Facebook Marketplace or eBay. You're just kinda you know, cleaning literally out the closets here versus the high-end stuff. So pull out anything that has a significant value and consider putting that on Facebook Marketplace uh, or eBay. Furniture wise, that will draw people to a yard sale, but even your nicer furniture, I would still consider selling Facebook Marketplace versus selling yard sale. Because when people get to that yard sale, they want to talk you down uh, and I want you to be able to get the most value for it. So I love yard sales for getting rid of all the trinkets in your life, but I wouldn't encourage you to just kind of put all your eggs in that basket uh, and then be discouraged when someone just tried to buy your dining room table for 25 bucks. Um, you know, maybe it should have been in a Facebook marketplace for a hundred if that's what you felt like it was worth. So, uh, you know, consider what it is um, before you're just throwing it out in the yard for a yard sale. Okay. Oh, that was you, Karen. Okay. So two of you now, I will put it on my list for tomorrow. So we'll look up brand club, um, and go hunting. Um, or actually, if, uh, now that you say that, I think, um, let me look it up now because there was one that I recently was, um, oh no, this wasn't it. Someone else recently asked me about another app. And I will tell you guys, if you ever find an app that tells you like, oh, you're going to get a ton of coupons and a ton of online offers, so many of these apps that want you to pay to join the app, no. They're like multi-level marketing companies. Uh, and their goal is just to get a bunch of people to pay to use an app that really doesn't work. So that I was just making sure. That was when I recently uh, answered on um, Facebook messages. So making sure it wasn't quite the same thing. But anytime an app wants you to pay to be a member to get access to special sales, uh, it's not gonna be magical. Just don't do it. So I will check out Brand Club though, and I will um, let you guys know what I think. Okay, um, oh, sorry, Lynn, off topic, best month to buy a mattress. And thank you for asking that again, Lynn. I think I do remember seeing you already ask it. Uh, and are warehouse clubs a good place to look? So warehouse clubs do sell mattresses. You have some good prices, but really no selection. You're gonna have like three options in a warehouse club, potentially more online. The best time to get a mattress is always a three-day weekend, uh, ideally a three-day patriotic weekend. So if you could hold out, Lynn, for Memorial Day, that's going to be your next one, July 4th, Labor Day, Veterans Day. Those are our big ones. Um, so Memorial Day, it's not far. I mean, this Friday is April, so you just got two months. If you wanted to hold out, you would find some significant savings. Uh, another option for mattresses, uh, I'm just going to throw this out there because we have friends that own a mattress shop here in town, is that mattress stores, uh, folks don't realize, they're a lot like car dealerships and mattresses have a amount of time that you can sell that particular model. And if you didn't sell it in that amount of time, you're not allowed to. And so you'll find some um, uh, like lower end or I don't know, I don't, my brain can't think of the right word, but it's almost like off-brand mattress stores. In our city, there is one, um, and they've literally built a store right next door. They're owned by the same people. But this allows them to take that last year model that's brand new and put it in the store next door and continue to sell it. They had to get it off the floor in this store that has the direct relationship with Sealy and Serta and everybody but you're still gonna get a really great price on it in the store next door. So looking for those options. So we're not going to like the used mattress store, um, but you're going to the store that 
you're basically getting last year's car versus paying for the newest, latest, and greatest. So that could also be a significant savings and not have to wait for a three-day weekend. Just gives you another option to look for in terms of mattress stores. So if you think of your kind of national brand mattress stores, they're gonna have a sub-brand hopefully that works with them or even asking a large mattress store in town Do you have a sub brand store that you work with? Um, Can help you find those too. Okay. Um, Oh, and best time to buy a washer and dryer, Cecilia. So I will chime in for washers and dryers. I don't know what your options are because it's going to be hit and miss based on your store. But right now, Best Buy is offering up to 50% on clearance and open box items. Uh, This is online and in store, and this is for the next two weeks. So I would recommend if you're needing appliances, I am all for scratch and dents, return models, clearance models, Um, but we've got 40% on open box appliances and TVs um, and open box laundry appliances. So, you know, just hunting and seeing what you can find in some of these outlet deals. Some of this will be based on what is in your area, but if you're looking for an appliance deal, maybe you extend that out. So um, if I've got a truck and I could go and I could pick up that washer and dryer myself, then maybe I'm willing to go and look and see what Charlotte has or what a store within an hour radius. I don't know where your cutoff is, but I would check this one out and just see if there's anything there. The other one for appliances is really the same trend of looking for that three day weekend. Easter can fall into it. We don't see really, really great discounts around Easter for appliances and large ticket items. Um, because most people aren't hunting for them on Easter weekend. So I would really hold off for Memorial day if you can. The other thing that you'll see for appliances on those three day weekends is rebates. So they will offer, if you buy two appliances, you get a $50 rebate. If you buy three, you get this, uh, and it just changes based on the store, but be ready for that to be part of the promotion incentive as well. Maybe you don't need a second appliance, um, but it will be something they come at you with. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. Oh, and Darcy's saying she loves her Oki Oki mattress. I've never heard of that one. Uh, it's a Japanese only company. Um, but that's awesome that you love it. And it's online. And there are a lot of online mattress companies that will just send you the mattress in the mail. We have a dream cloud. Um, and, and I know of a number of others. So you can kind of go hunting for good online mattresses. Don't forget Target. It has a connection with Casper now. So you can Also grab Casper mattresses through target.com and get your 5% red card discount if you wanted to. They do offer them on sale from time to time as well. Okay, guys, I'm going to go ahead and hop off. Um, I will be back on tomorrow at 2 for all of our drugstore deals this week. We've got a whole new month-long deals uh, running in Walgreens, so got a lot of things to share. Um, So hopefully you can join me for that. If you can't join live, it will be recorded, and you can watch after the fact on the drugstore deals this week. So... Thanks for joining me tonight. We'll be back next Monday, same time, same place, always Monday night at 8.30 Eastern. Uh, Thanks again for joining me tonight. And, you know, drag a friend along next week. More the merrier every week, right? So uh, it's always great to talk to you guys, and I will talk to you again soon.